It is now 5 o'clock. We will begin the workshop for the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, August 29th, 2013. For the meeting on Tuesday, I will have the prayer, and Alderman Waldron, you will be in charge of the Pledge of Allegiance. Please review over your minutes for August 8th, the public hearing and regular meeting for Tuesday night. Presentations. I'm showing the workshop only. Will we be doing that presentation, Chief? She uh, she's supposed to be here. She said she may be running late, so whenever she gets here, we'll okay. Go so back we're going to gonna go on and move forward. And then we'll have our certificates of appreciation, Chief's awards of excellence, and the uh, proclamation for National Preparedness Month. We're going to move right on into old business. Old business is first reading ordinance 2013. Dash 10, an ordinance to amend Title II, Chapter 6 of the Laverne Municipal Code by adding members to the Local Emergency Planning Committee. I believe we're adding um, Rima. Adding a, a member from SORT and right. a member from the Smyrna Rutherford County Airport Authority. Okay. Do I have any questions or comments on this? Moving right along, we will have a second reading, Ordinance 2013-11, an ordinance to amend the 2012-2013 fiscal year general fund budget. Do we have any questions? We discussed this at great length. First reading, do I have any comments, concerns on this one? We will have a public hearing yes. on this one. Okay. If not, number six, second reading ordinance 2013-12, an ordinance to amend the 2012-2013 fiscal year state street aid fund budget. Any questions, comments, or concerns on this one? Again, we will be having a public hearing on this one as well. Number seven, second reading, ordinance 2013-13, an ordinance to amend the 2013-2012-2013 fiscal year senior citizens fund budget. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this? We all are quiet bunch tonight. We're agreeable, aren't we? I know it. Again, we will have a public hearing regarding this matter. Number eight, second reading, ordinance 2013-14, an ordinance to amend the 2012-2013 fiscal year streets capital projects fund budget. This is dealing with the Waldron Road construction. To remind everyone. Again, I think we'll have a we'll have a public hearing on all of these. Okay. Number nine, second reading, ordinance 2013-15, an ordinance to amend the City of Laverne zoning ordinance regarding cemeteries and residential districts. This did receive a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on July 30th. 2013. Do I have any questions on the cemeteries? If so, we've got this. If Kristen's here, she can review over this if y'all need a uh, refresher on this ordinance. I don't think so. Kristen, is there anything else you want to add to this? No, I think it's perfect. Okay. I think it's, it, it's a good administrative a good cleanup, yeah. Number 10, second reading, ordinance 2013-16, <coughs> excuse me, an ordinance to amend Title 11, <coughs> Chapter 6 of the Laverne Municipal Code by adding a new section 
11-604 regarding amphetamine control. This will be the second reading, and I do have a question for uh, Mr. Cope. Yes, ma'am. Um, what have we heard from the attorney? Have we heard anything from the attorney general on this matter? The attorney general has not issued an opinion yet. The my understanding is, and Chief, you might be able, you may know a little bit about this, but my understanding, I spoke with the lawyer at Barron Bates, who was mm -hmm. referenced the last time this was presented. Her understanding is, is that the Tennessee chiefs of police have requested the opinion through the state representative that they mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that request has even been made yet, but there is no opinion from the AG's office yet about this. So, you know, I think it's, it's up obviously to the board what you want to do. You, you pass it on first reading, obviously. One, one thing mm -hmm. that you could do is to uh, wait for the attorney general to opine to see what he or she says and, uh, or what he says uh, before you, uh, take further action on it or you can move forward with it if you if you feel okay in terms of my view of it, it mm -hmm. to me it's not clear that, that, that it's okay I'm not saying that it's not okay mm -hmm. it's just gray and I think there's mm -hmm. why there's a lot of discussion about it because it's just a gray area me personally I think it's kind of taking a stand I think we need as a government to take a stand I think it could make a, a huge difference and some opinions down the road. Uh, but of course, it's up to this boat, totally up to this board. But I'm all for standing up and saying, let's do it. If it comes back, we can't. Eh, we can go in and change it. But I, I think we're sending a, a, a loud message. And I think it's a message that needs to be sent. Now, that, that's just my two cents. I, I, agree, I agree with you. Um I think I anything would come from the state would supersede anything we did anyway. Absolutely. Exactly. So, um, but I do have a question. We had spoken about maybe talking to different pharmacies mm -hmm. in, in, uh, throughout Laverne. Um, have we arranged that, or is that still going to be in the works, just so we're, they're on board with us? Um, I don't. Has anyone <coughs> from yours talked to? I haven't. No, we have not. Is that but something? That, that, that I mean, we, it's not like we have a tremendous amount. We could, between now and Tuesday go and visit, tell them what we're doing, and uh, maybe invite them to come, because I believe this will have to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. It does not, okay. But they can certainly come during citizens' comments and, and speak on this matter. Mm -hmm. We'll make a list, and I can personally go up through there. I know we're closed, everybody will be closed Monday, Tuesday morning. But I can't hit tomorrow. I can uh, go Tuesday morning, and maybe Cherie, if she could go with me. Uh, it's up no. to you. Mm -hmm. From some of the things I've heard in some of the other areas, I don't know that the biggest lobby would mm -hmm. be from the pharmacists themselves. Right. As mm -hmm. the companies who. I think that's what. The that's the requirement for mm -hmm. the prescription. If it's at a federal problem. Right. And you still even, it's really, I think, more work for them the way they're doing it now because you have to give your driver's license. You have to fill out all this little stuff every time on there. Mm -hmm. the pharmacists are having to do that now because of the requirements. Right. But if they have a prescription, that, that probably cut down on their time frame, actually, from having to go through all that that you have to do at the computer. At the if they don't checkout. have to replicate that into a, another database, yes. I don't know if that would change. It wouldn't change state law. Mm -hmm. no. They would still have to replicate that into the, the additional database, the meth task force database, actually, is what it is. But we'll certainly go around and talk with them, <laughs> bring back our findings for Tuesday night. Any other comments? Now's the time we can talk about it. I think it's a good thing. All righty. Moving right along to the consent agenda items. Okay, you want to back up and grab it, right? Real quick. 
you're here. Absolutely. I apologize. We're, we're going to back up for just a moment and give Miss or Officer Sheree Robertson the floor. And I, I asked Sheree to come because she's worked on this and Bruce and I discussed it. It may not even require board approval probably but just so that you're aware of it because we will be putting at least the police department's logo there if everything works out and if you like the city of Laverne's logo too, whatever. Great. Good afternoon, Mayor, Alderman. Um, there is a company, Mark and Sell Solutions, that I've been working with. Um, they want to give us an, basically an unlimited number of free dry erase boards they start out, I believe, with maybe about 1,500, and then I can keep ordering as I go. This would be to give out to our children, give out at events, uh, however we choose. Um, basically, they sell some advertisements on the board so that we hand out. However, those advertisements would be subject to our approval because we want family-friendly advertisers on there. And I really think it's a good idea, and it's a way to get to have some stuff to hand out that kids can use in class, use at home, parents can use if they need it. And it's free, it doesn't cost us anything at all. And I like the fact that it's unlimited number. There's no contract to sign. We don't have to agree to only use them. There's several companies out there that do that, but these guys have been really great. And I gave Bruce um, some paperwork on it. Also gave him an example of what it would look like. And he had even discussed, they're working on uh, letting me know uh, if, how much it would cost, if anything, to put the city's logo on there because it would have the Laverne Police Department logo on there because they're doing it uh, for um, community policing for the police department. Yeah, I think the only cost the city would incur would be to put, you know, our own advertisements on there. Uh, mm -hmm. And we don't have a price back on that yet. But I have not gotten a price back on that yet. Right. Well, I know a lot of classes, teachers use the dry erase boards in their classroom. We can hand them out old timers day. And also, it also, I forgot to mention that it also has my choice of um, safety tips. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the example I gave Bruce was the gun safety tips, but there's three examples of safety tips that we can put on there too that goes on there for them to have. Sounds like a good idea for me. Any questions for Officer Robertson? Mm -mm. Sounds good. Good job. Thank you. Just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Back to the consent agenda items. Approve recommendations for city bids and purchases. First one up is bid for enterprise storage and backup systems for the IT department. We get this bid and we got four back. Um, of course, in looking at it, you can tell that the price range can vary. But the IT department is in bad need of not only the storage of the backup also, mm -hmm. and we were at that with negotiation or, or tweaking some things, uh, Glenn was able to get the same thing that Murfreesboro and Smyrna has, so that if we ever needed to put, send our backup to them or their backup to us to save at a different location, um, it could be interchangeable. Um, but the best of all is he got, we got both for under the budgeted amount for storage. Awesome. So we need, and we need both. Oh yeah. Um, He's accusing me of causing him to really need the storage really bad because I'm <laughs> scanning, but we do need to, that is something the city has needed and we are in, in very much need of that. And it is budgeted item and it's under budget for that. So awesome. any questions on this? Um, the next bid that we did was for a three wheeled field groomer for the parks department that came in way way under budget um, I like hearing that. 
I think that was, I think we had put, uh, the, the city had put $30,000 in for that and we're gonna get the groomer and the equipment needed to attachments for $18,047.78 um, from Smith and Turf. And I think that would be a great asset for David and the guys at the Parks Department. The next one, I did a bid for office supplies and went through the whole, it took me a week to go through the whole bid that everybody's bid and put it in the spreadsheet to find out Staples had a state contract too. So in looking at that, I went back and pulled the state contract and put it beside of Staples bid. And I could have gone with Staples or another company, but in looking and seeing the state contract beat the beat what we had, so I would just suggest that we piggyback the state contract and go with that. And there will be a, an ex extensive list that I can pass out that was on the state, and we will get anywhere from 25 to 75, 70, 80 percent off of other items through Staples. Also, one example was. Um, those, the small office shredders you may see, mm -hmm. they had uh, one for $123, the same size that we had been paying 250 for. So it's a very aggressive contract, so I think it would benefit us to, to piggyback that contract, especially as much office supplies as we, we use around here. Y'all stop us at any time if you have questions, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I try to make sure I say everything, but I, you can always have questions. Um, and uh, the budget was, uh, in the budget, it was put in for a um, utility vehicle for the Parks Department. We did not have to bid it because after AC came back with three quotes, the company that we wanted to use, that he wanted to go with, was under $10,000, but over five. So we'd like to go with um, Tri Green of Murfreesboro for a John Deere for 8,686.78. And that is well within the budgeted amount for that uh, piece of equipment also for the Parks Department. <coughs> Excellent. Any other questions? Questions? You're doing good so far. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mason Road Pump Station, there was no bids received, so we've got to look at other options for that. We didn't receive any bids for that. Okay. I thought I saw Bill here. There you are. So <laughs> what do we do from this point? <clears throat> the, the bid she took, there were four pumps and two of the electrical devices, one of the electrical devices for two pumps mm -hmm. that need to be placed. So we have two pumps still running. Right now they're holding up the load. Uh, I think Bruce and Kyle and I are thinking about either bidding them again or putting them in one of the other bids that are coming up soon or putting them in the pump, pump station change order that's on Walden Road. We, we haven't decided what we want to recommend to the board. Is that correct, Bruce? Yes, that's correct. Okay. We'll either rebid it or, or attach it as a change order to one of the other projects. All right. Okay. Thanks, Felicia. Next, approved contract with Derby City Amusements for a carnival at Old Timers Festival. Happy, I think you and Evan and Bruce have been working on this one. Yes. Unfortunately, the um, original amusement carnival company that we had was the one that we'd used last year. We have chased them for the last six months to get them to sign the contract, which they never did. So as Chief Walker a couple of weeks ago was asking their arrival date and for other information, um, they informed us that they had made the decision three days before not to come to Laverne. By um, some luck, some stroke of luck, we actually found another carnival that was available called Derby City Amusements. You can go online and look at it, but they look like they're actually a much better contract. They've already given us hours of operation, rides they're going to bring. Um, I think that they're percentage amount that they're planning to pay us on the ticket sales equals or exceeds the one that we had last year. Um, in the contract, as you see it, they have asked for exclusivity 
which we talked with him. We told them that we could not do exclusive because we already had other food vendors that we've accepted right. who were already bringing some of these products they wanted exclusive rights to. Um, and I think that was really the only big hiccup and they agreed to cross that out. They did ask us, um, city staff or someone that represents the city to sit in the ticket sales booth, which is air conditioned. I'm, I'm glad to report for our city workers who are helping us with that. They do that as evidence that they are not shorting us on that 15 to 20 percent depending on what their total ticket sales are and that's fine with us because for the last two years we've kind of raised eyebrows going is that really accurate and they don't want that to happen they're in bowling green the weekend before so they're coming down on sunday um, before the festival they'll they'll start the carnival rides thursday and go through sunday thursday night family night but i know evan looked at it Yes, ma'am, we're fine. Any questions? Mm -hmm. And they do have a Ferris wheel. They do have a Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ride those things. Okay. Moving on. Approved change order number two for the water treatment plant improvements project. Okay. Mr. Bill Griggs. <coughs> If you remember at the last uh, work session, I, I brought this up. I told you we weren't ready to present it. Now we are uh, getting ready to paint the doors and frames at the water plant. We found many of the frames and doors are in such bad condition they just need to be replaced. Most of them are in what we call in the old portion, which is roughly 20 years old. The ones in the new portion, which is now 10 years old, seem to be in pretty good shape. Uh, Kyle and I at that time weren't satisfied. We had a good price and whatnot. We've been on site again and looked at it. And now we're satisfied that, that they need doing, and we think this is a pretty good price, and it's still within the contingency budget. budget. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Bill. D. Approve an application for a roadblock to be conducted by Box 100 <laughs> from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. on October 5th, 2013, with a rain date of October 12th, 2013, at the intersection of Murfreesboro Road and Stones River Road. This is a fundraiser for Box 100. I noticed Ms. Davidson came in. Do we have any questions? Mm -hmm. No questions. We'll have to liven y'all up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> e approve change order one for the east hurricane creek sewer system investigation mr hall i see you here with us tonight welcome thank you, <coughs> thank you for having me city of laverne contracted with hydromax usa llc to perform a sewer system investigation in the East Hurricane Creek drainage basin, the contract amount is roughly $82,000. Uh, the estimated bid quantities are now being balanced with the final installed quantities or work performed quantities. We would like to reduce this contract by almost $16,000. <coughs> so the change order is a reduction of about 21% of contract amount. I, I don't think there will be a lot of contention. Wow, I like, I like that change order. Come back up to the podium. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. All. Thank you. That still left everybody speechless. <laughs> I tell you, everybody's just dropping everything today. Good, good deal. Number, well, L, approve it, amendment two for the agreement with Wiser Company LLC for the Hurricane Creek Greenway project. Mr. Brown, I believe that's you. <laughs> okay, now we're on a roll here, Kyle. Keep us going. Uh, basically, this is the Greenway uh, project uh, <coughs> with Wiser we, that we have. And in doing the design for it, we've had the question about putting some bathrooms and stuff like that in. To put bathrooms in, we're going to have to have a little bit of redesign. We'll have to go back to the environmental clearance and stuff like that. One of the reasons why we wanted to do this is 
the limits of the trail on each end is kind of confined to what we do have and we had a little bit of money that was left that we didn't want to just waste so we just want to use the most amount of money we could of the grant so we decided that it would be a good idea to see if we could put in a bathroom now preliminary preliminarily seems like the bathrooms the state's going to be okay with that but uh, we still hadn't had a final yes but Either way, just to, to do the bathroom, just going to be a little bit more design cost. We've got to go, like I said, go back to environmental. So that's what Wiser's done to revise our contract to include that. The other thing they've done is the, the first contract you approved, we had a six month contract, or not a contract, but a construction time frame that they expect to be done. After surveying more and more, knowing the wetlands and everything, we realized that six months is probably not going to be feasible. It's probably going to be more like a nine month construction time. And to do CEI services, it's based on time. So if you increase that from six months to nine months, it's just it's just more money. So we we put that extra cost in there too. So that's what these are. Everything's still pretty much in budget with a construction estimate that we still have. Even adding the bathrooms and and uh, revising Wiser's fees, we still will be you know under under the grant amount that we that we have. So. Hopefully the bathrooms, in the bathroom location we was looking at is by the multi-purpose building. Instead of attaching it to it, it would be close to it. Uh, that way it's, it is a separate building. That way if you add it on to the multi-purpose building, you could. If it ever got tore down, it'd be a standalone building. And plus it would it would be a standalone building for the Greenway. But ACM could use it for, you know, the ballparks if you need be. And we're kind of considering that a trail head too. For, for right now until we yeah. actually, we're going to have a parking area, but to run sewer and water and have a nicer building that we'd probably want, that'd be a separate project in the future. So we're trying to do what we can with what money we have. And this is grant money that we have 1.4 million? It's 1.9 1. total. Okay. But grant money, so. Any questions? Still the, uh, with this push back the construction date we still talk about next spring now, everything still should be the same right now the state has the initial submittal and everything should just run concurrently They're, they'll ask to put that or include that so we'll have to get environmental clearance so they'll have to we'll have to probably add to the plans but it shouldn't push anything back from what we got they've still got a We've received some comments, or Wiser did already, that they want the floodplain shown, some different stuff they want added to the plan. So that's what they're working on right now to make sure they get accurate to send back in. But they're currently at the state right now being being reviewed to try to get uh, notice to proceed with right away. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get that as soon as possible because we've got July of next year that we need to have the notice to proceed with construction. So definitely trying to meet that deadline. <coughs> Kyle. New business number 12 motion to appoint or remove board members. We do have a position on the construction board of adjustment and appeals. We have one uh, vacancy on that board and we still do not have any applications for that board. Mm -hmm. And that is the construction board of adjustment and appeals. Next is our local emergency planning committee, and that is our public works position. And I think y'all are wanting to wait until we decide who's going to become the manager over the utilities. On that one. Next, we have the historical preservation advisory committee. We still have one vacancy on that, and we still do not have any applications for that board either. Next is our Economic Development Advisory Committee. We do have a vacant position, and we do have one applicant, Miss Virginia McMath. We were excited to see a, a lady apply for that board, and she is well qualified for that position. So we're, we're excited about that. I guess that's it on the, the boards. Mm -hmm. All 
All right. Number 13, first reading, ordinance 2013-17, an ordinance to adopt a schedule of fees for the release of public information <coughs> for the city of Laverne. Mayor, we, re we received a letter from our new MTAS consultant, and he was advising us that there was an issue recently raised with the Comptroller's Office, the Office of Open Records, uh, which may affect us, and, and, and going back and looking, it, it does. Uh, we had adopted our fee schedule by resolution, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I didn't know it, but in our charter, it states that fees for copying and certification shall be charged as established by ordinance. Uh, but in our ordinance and our municipal code, we specify that it can be set by resolution. So what this ordinance does, it goes into the municipal code and changes the requirement from resolution to ordinance, and then the following section in this ordinance does set the the schedule of fees by ordinance as required. So this is really just a, a cleaning job as far as getting our, our books in order the way they should be. None of the fees are changing. It's the same fees that we approved, what, in 2009, I think I it was. Say, they so nothing, nothing is changing. It's just getting it set up the way we're supposed to. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Number 14, motion to approve an interlocal agreement with the Town of Smyrna to provide wastewater treatment services for the proposed Oliver Constable development on Blair Road. And I'm going to let Bruce reveal his, his findings. Mayor, as you recall, uh, I think it was two months ago, we had requested the Town of Smyrna uh, to, to send us an agreement to provide sewer service uh, for this proposed development off of Blair Road. Uh, I believe Mr. Constable is here. Um, we finally got that early this week, actually. Uh, and if you'll go to the second page of the agreement, um, under number six, under rates and billing, uh, the proposed rate that Smyrna is going to charge Laverne is $3.90 per 1,000 gallons up to 1.5 million gallons per day, and then anything over that 1.5 MGD uh, will be charged at a rate of 573 per 1,000. Um, I went back and found out what the rates were that were being charged by Metro. Um, Metro charges by the cubic foot, uh, which is at a dollar 40 per cubic foot. So. And converting that over to a thousand gallon rate, uh, the, the current metro rate is actually a dollar eighty seven uh, per thousand. So the proposed Smyrna rate is, is more than double uh, what we're paying metro to treat our sewage. Uh, so what I did is, is I took our current sewer rate for residential and backed out the metro rate uh, and added in the, the proposed Smyrna rates. Uh, and, and as you can see, it's on page 98 of the packet. Uh, there is a substantial increase to the sewer rates uh, that we would have to charge this development. And this is just a, a draft sewer rate. We actually did not take everything into account as far as administrative fees because there is going to be extra work involved, you know, because we're going to have to pay Smyrna and, and everything associated with that. Um, currently, the sewer rate for the first 2,000 gallons. Uh, it's $22.99. Uh, it would go up to approximately $27.05 for, for a minimum bill of 2,000 gallons. And then each 1,000 gallons thereafter currently is $5.96. Uh, the proposed rate would be $7.99. So it, like I said, it is a substantial increase. And you'll see on that page that there's some sample bills. I put a minimum bill of 2,000 gallons, uh, a 5,000 gallon bill, and a 7,000 gallon bill. And as you can see from the left column to the right, uh, the 5,000 gallon, which I think is about our average bill here in Laverne, uh, would go up about $10 per month. Um, so with, with that being said, I mean, the next page in the packet uh, does show the, um, the plan that he has put together. Uh, some of the lines are a little hard to see, but uh, you can see how he's proposing to, to lay out that subdivision on that piece of property. Um, 
But basically, it's, it's going to be a board decision as to whether you want to proceed and, and approve this agreement with the town of Smyrna. Uh, he has already submitted the rezoning request. Uh, he deferred it from the last planning commission meeting. Um, so there's not been any action taken on that yet. Uh, but, but that's basically where we are. This is my opinion. <clears throat> right now we're making, if we were, this board were to vote on that, we're automatically saying we don't care that those citizens are being charged more. Our rates are already rough as it is right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then he has the capabilities, obviously, of hooking on to ours. Yes, there is a cost associated with that as well. And Steve, it will keep the, the sewer down. If it goes to Metro, like the rest of our sewer, because years down the road, I guarantee y'all they're gonna go, why is our sewer so much, before, when all of us are gone, I think it's gonna be even a bigger mess. That's my opinion. I don't think we should willingly let citizens go into a subdivision knowing that we were putting that burden on them. I want development, I want the developers here, but I think it's up to them to get the sewer where it needs to be and do it and do it right. I don't think we should, should put that kind of burden on people that we want to move into that neighborhood. That's my two cents. And you're sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay. And I agree. I, I think yeah. maybe even the initial buyers would know mm -hmm. if it was said to them. But what happens when they sell their home and then, like mm -hmm. you said, 10, 15, 20 years down. And it's going to be a nightmare in the billing, mm -hmm. an absolute nightmare, mm -hmm. because we would have to pay the bill to Smyrna, just like we do Metro, get the money from the citizens. So you're basically going to have two different systems going in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a lot to ask for one subdivision to our employees. And I don't, like you said, with the people that come in and buy those, Homes are going to know at the beginning, but years down the road, I think it's, it'll be a fiasco. But that's, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to listen to the other opinions, but I mean, we've, we've studied this long and hard. Mm -hmm. We've looked at it long and hard. Mm -hmm. And I think adding even more burden, I, I just think that's, I just don't agree. <coughs> but, I mean, y'all are willing to, Mr. Constable's here if y'all would like to ask questions. I know staff has had some concerns uh, as far as him connecting up to the Laverne sewer mm -hmm. or the Smyrna sewer. Uh, he, he feels that uh, he would not need a pump station to connect to Smyrna. We're not so sure about that. Uh, we kind of think either way he's going to have to put in a pump station. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's him as the developer, so I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's a question for him. But, uh, you know, um, I, I do think it could cause some confusion down the road, mm -hmm. uh, especially with water billing and, and trying to keep track of, of which parcels, which homes mm -hmm. get charged which rate. Uh, we've had issues with that in the past of trying to you know, keep things straight as who gets charged what, and, and I think it's just better to keep everybody under the same rate. I agree. That's my opinion. Any more discussion? Any questions? So I, I just question why Smyrna is so so much higher. Um, a few years back, we went through a whole lot of uh, things thrown at us that Smyrna was cheaper. <laughs> all of a sudden, they're, they're higher than what Metro is. So. Yeah. Uh, they, they've expanded their plant, obviously, mm -hmm. so there's some cost there. Uh, this 390 is the rate that they're charging Nissan, uh, so they feel that they could not have given us a lower rate than their biggest customer, obviously. Um, but on the other hand, I will go ahead and mention this. We are getting ready to start a rate study with Metro on the rates there. So there's a good chance 
as much as I hate to say it, that those rates will be going up in the next year or two. I'm not sure of the time frame exactly. Uh, but as part of the contract we have with Metro, we're at the point where we have to look at those rates again. And there's getting a study, rate study is getting ready to get started. Uh, and I've got a meeting actually next week with, with Metro uh, to discuss the consultant that'll be doing that, that study. So, you know, it, it's coming. We don't, we just don't know how much yet. Any more questions? <coughs> All righty. If not, I'm moving on to number 15. <coughs> resolution 2013-18. A resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare certain property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. And I think we have, what, two trucks? This time we have two trucks, and I think they're both from Parks and Recreation. And they're in pretty bad shape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scrap that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, number 16. Resolution 2013-19. A resolution to accept the Lehman Hahn subdivision. This this item and the next one's basically what what happened is we've had a their minor plats. We usually don't do anything with minor plats or accept those subdivisions. However, with these two subdivisions, both of them had or they fell close to an area where our major thoroughfare plan called mm -hmm. for a larger right away than what they have existing now. So and doing the plant and going through the planning commission process they were asked to, to dedicate the right-of-way to the city mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we, what's led us to this point here is is it's basically instead of accepting the any improvements like roadway improvement or water line improvement or or a sewer line that where you actually are physically taking over structure or infrastructure this is basically just accepting the donation of the, of the property is mm -hmm. basically is right away and that's, that's on this one and the next one. It's just mm -hmm. the, the first one's uh, along, I believe it was Dick Buchanan Dick Street. Buchanan. And then the next one on Pope, the Pope Drive subdivision will be uh, Jefferson, Jefferson Pike and Pope Drive. Any questions? And 17, Resolution 2013-20, a resolution to accept the Pope Drive subdivision, and Mr. Brown has already explained to us what those are. And like I said, they're just taking the properties and they've divided mm -hmm. some acreage there. Any questions? If not, we'll move further. Number 18, discussion, settlement, Waldron Road, widening project, City of Laverne versus James D. Yarbrough, Yarbrough slash McDonald's. Yes, ma'am. Is that you, Evan? It is. The, this is uh, the McDonald's, obviously, on Waldron mm -hmm. Road. We have four, I think, pending condemnation mm -hmm. cases that have been outstanding since the road project. If you'll recall, we had 54 parcels of land that the city acquired, and out of those 54 parcels, we only have four condemnations pending, which is actually pretty good in terms of when you think about the scope of this project. In any event, with regard to this condemnation and the three others that are still pending, the landowners, and in this case the leaseholder, McDonald's, wanted to wait until the project was completed so that they would know how much damages they might have with regard to the widening of Walden Road. I received this letter two days ago, and uh, so I have not had a chance to really analyze what, what I think of the offer, but I did want to go ahead and bring it to the board so you were aware that they were making this offer, and then uh, between now and our, our next meeting next month, I hope to have, well, I will have an opportunity to review it and come back and make a recommendation or share my thoughts with you about whether I think it's a fair offer or, or whether I don't. Just so you know going forward what the city's options are, you, clearly you don't have to accept an offer. Uh, if, if the city and the landowner aren't able to come to some agreement about payment of damages, then we would go to court and have a jury trial and a jury would, would at that point decide 
what would be a fair amount of compensation for the landowner. We have already in this process, and I know I'm telling you things you already know, but when the city condemns property at the beginning, we have to get appraisals. Mm -hmm. And whatever the appraisal says from our appraiser, we, we go ahead and we pay that money into court. Mm -hmm. So there's money we've already paid that's sitting in court and has been all this time. What they're asking for is additional money that they're claiming that they're owed for the work on Walden Road. I hope that explains sort of where we are on that. And happy to answer any questions. Any questions? So there's really no action this time. I just wanted to say, mm -hmm. here it is, right. and, and we'll be thinking through it next month. Okay. No questions. We're going to number 19, discussion, employee longevity plan, and service awards. Cheryl, there you are. It's Lewis. Lewis Smith. Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. I would like to present this at the request of the City Administrator. We wanted to submit this for Board of Mayor and Alderman review and consideration. The proposal has been prepared in consultation with the City Administrator and the final recommendation is supported by the City of Laverne Department of Human Resources. The policy modification proposal is for our employee longevity plan and our service award program. Policy history, current policy affords a yearly stipend of $50 for each year worked, not to exceed the city imposed maximum of $700. In 2012, our citywide longevity and milestone award payout was $43,600. Current policy has been in effect since 1998. Originally, it was called a bonus. Now it's currently known as longevity. Part-time employees were awarded $50 per year, regardless of their service time. Our current longevity and milestone award budget for 2013-14 fiscal year is $52,170. The recommended policy modification is as follows. Full-time employees would receive $100 for each year of service not to exceed a city maximum of $1,000. Part-time employees would receive $50 for each year of service not to exceed a maximum of $1,000. It would also allow us to provide milestone awards, gifts for five-year incremental service time with a $25 gift maximum, meaning recognition would be at 5, 10, 15, 20, so forth and so on for year milestones. The longevity award eligibility and distribution would require an active employment date of November 1st of the said year of issuance. Employees must be employed at the time of longevity award issuance distribution, which typically has been during the month of November. And then our five-year incremental milestone award recipients would be recognized in December as typically done in the past years. The estimated total of this proposal for longevity and milestone, milestone award um, modification, the payout for 2013 would be $82,375, which is about a $30,000 difference between what is currently budgeted. And in our opinion, this will enhance our current policy and afford means for enhancing our employee retention, morale, and overall satisfaction. Our recent salary study did afford opportunity for meaningful increases. However, longevity was not weighted in the study. The percentages given were comparative to market rates only. This is a gradual recognizable approach to addressing concerns where some employees feel that salary compression issues negate their value and their worth in their current positions. In this day and time, we are always trying to implement ideas and programs that will help with our competitive blend of marketing and, um, and in recruiting and retention efforts. So in our opinion, this is something that will greatly enhance our opportunity uh, to help employees in their retention and recruitment. Any questions? Any concerns? What, what we're looking to do is, is kind of get your thoughts and opinions uh, at this point. And, and if, if it seems favorable, what we'll need to do is, is a budget amendment 
uh, which we would bring back at the next council meeting next month. Uh, and then once that gets approved, then we would be able to put this into effect. Uh, when we did the, the pay study, uh, like Cheryl said, you know, it didn't really have a lot, of, lot to do with longevity. And a lot of the employees, you know, just got basically a 3% increase. Uh, this, this would give them uh, a little more, uh, you know, boost in, in morale and, and, you know, that we're trying to do something for them uh, instead of just the regular 3% increase that, that, that they got. So that, this, is, this is one reason we're bringing this up, just to try to encourage the people that are here, the, the ones that didn't get as much of an increase as a lot of folks did. And we just wanted to bring it before you to, to get your thoughts and opinions and, and, and you know, see if you wanted to, to pursue this. We just went through the compensation study, though. <clears throat> and believe it or not, though, there were a lot of big, good, big changes made <coughs> and brought the pay up to, to level off, which I thought we did a very, very good job there on doing that. Um, we still play for benefits for the majority of employees that's been here for quite some time. We've also got to consider next year we're buying the fire department. So we've got a lot of more employees that's going to fall under um, that we're going to have to consider that. And number two, we just come out of a budget and I don't think we need to be amending a budget for this right now. We should have thought about that prior to the, the budget that we set for this year. And I mean, I think we've done pretty good on this budget this year. And like I said, we're gonna be buying, or, or buying the fire department, we're gonna be working new employees in, and if everything goes accordingly, we'll be hiring all of those firefighters, I think it's 12, as we go into to, to doing this in the 2014-15 budget. Mm -hmm. um, I think the employees know how much we, we, they mean to us, and the majority of the people now are not even getting longevity checks. So, I mean, at least we, we've kept our longevity checks going. We've kept that running, and we've made sure that they've got it. They've got it on time. Even when times were tough, we, we, we did not cut that out with the employees. And I don't think this is the time that we need to be adjusted, that that's just me, um, especially since we've just come in and upped everybody's pay, bringing them up to scale, and, and, and of course insurance is going up as well on us, so the next year, that's my thought. I mean, I, I'm, this is a, is a board decision, so we need to put some discussion into this. I think there's a fine line between wanting to do what's right for the employees and mm -hmm. try to do some things that can retain them or even mm -hmm. um, bring better employees on board, and also, but us looking forward to the future, we have some real financial problems coming down the road. So and it's maybe been, something we can look through in the budget time next year or, or if, but I'm with you. I mean, we've, we've done the best we could and we've, we've raised many employees up and given their raises back. And, and, but there's that fine line between what we have to do. And exactly. Looking. And I think this, you know, and that is a nice thing to get in November and we, we've been able to do it, the, you know, for the years that we've been here. And where I know a lot of cities are cutting their longevity out. And we've been able to maintain it and, and still have money in the bank and watching our money. And, and um, we've been very cautious with our money. And I, I just don't think this is the time to do that, especially since we just come out of the budget where we raised everybody's salaries. And I, I, that's my opinion. Well, maybe we could think about doing this maybe later that's, that's when what we saying. can get all of this yes. other stuff. We've got our CAD system coming in. We're, you know, we're, we've got big purchases that we're, we're getting ready to do. Like I said, with the fire department, we're getting ready to bring all those under the city umbrella. And uh, this is a good thing. I can understand is, it, where, yes. you know, the employees and everything. But there again, we just have to do what we can when we can. And we've never once entertained the fact of even when other cities were saying, uh-uh, we, we never once entertained that thought. We said, no, our employees are worth that to us, and we've made sure we've had that money in there to, to do that. And we kept our promise on the 
the face study and got that worked into this year's budget. So, I mean, we, we've kept our word in taking care of you and, and doing the insurance and making sure you have fantastic insurance. And this budget's already set this year. And, I, you know, coming down the road, I just, I'm not ready to, to tweak the budget yet until a, it's absolute necessary. Mm -hmm. And I think we're on a good road. We're not, we're not wasting money. I think we're get, we're get departments are getting what they need, their, their equipment and, and everything that they're getting to need to do your jobs. And uh, if y'all just bear with us on this, and we're, we're not taking it from you. We just can't up it. <laughs> Thank you for the consideration. And, and again, I will confer um, with Bruce as we And like I said, let's look at next year. We, we've got a lot of bites coming our way from economic development. We're expecting big things. We do have a new dollar store that's going to be coming uh, on Waldron Road. Oh, really? We've got a new super speedway coming um, right across from Fergus. So we're getting things, guys, and it is because of y'all we're getting these things. So as we grow, certainly we want to keep you um, here with us because y'all are doing the work. So we're getting there. Just hang with us, and we've got some more bites coming down the road too with economic development. So, good. If y'all are just hang in there, we got you your raises. We're not taking it. We just can't up it right now. Y'all hang with us on it. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other? Wow. We're down to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Green, we'll start with you. I don't have a thing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I can't think of anything. Okay. Alderman Walter. Just uh, hoping everybody have a safe and happy Labor Day and keep everybody keep the Mankin family in their prayers for their loss. That's it. Alderman Broker? Nothing at all. Oh, Chief, go ahead. Speaking out of order. I don't know if everyone knows it or not because I had forgotten to send an email out to everybody today and I apologize for that. Yesterday afternoon, former Chief Mike Patrick was transported to Stonecrest. He has stage four cancer. Oh. It isn't looking good at all. And uh, apparently it's just a matter of days. So if you would keep the Patrick family in your prayers too. Absolutely, absolutely. And please let us know so the city we can honor. He did serve the city. and We will. Honorably. What, 16 years? Is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. So please let us know, and hopefully the city we can. We will. Show I'll make respect. sure I do that, and don't forget to do that. Okay. Well, I have a lot to talk about. Sunday, 5 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Yep. We've got the end of the summer bash at Veterans Memorial Park. We've Fireworks. got fireworks, music. Jump thing bags. The kids get in. Yes, funnel cake. Food. So, yes. Bring your chairs. Bring your picnic stuff and come on out and have some fun with us Sunday night. Saturday at 3 o'clock here in the boardroom, we will have a workshop for all the uh, pageant girls and contestants. We do have a lady that is an expert that's going to come in and work with the girls. Also, we do have some dresses that have been donated, so if you want to be in the pageant, don't have a dress, you're welcome to come. It is totally yours. They are free and have been donated, so they are your dresses to keep if you find one. And that begins at 3 o'clock. And then pageants are September the 7th, starting at 1 o'clock at Laverne High School, and it goes from 1 o'clock all the way to, it'll be about 9 o'clock that night when we crown our royalty that night. So if you have an opportunity, if you're not working, a lot of you have donated your time to come out and work. If not, come out and cheer our kids on. Have I remembered all of our activities between now and then? Okay. Thank all of you for being here. And with that, I'll call this meeting adjourned.